Hey friends and family, welcome to Marcy Creates. This is Marcy and happy Sunday to you. Uh, if you're catching this on Monday, then happy Monday to you. Uh, I am coming to you late as I have been doing a lot of stuff around the house. So I've been a busy bee, but I'm happy to bring you a new color theory uh, project. A little bit different than what we've been doing. We will still talk about the color wheel, of course, but um, I wanted to start taking some inspirational pieces, do some inspirational pieces based on uh, colors um, that I've been posting on the Facebook group and also Pinterest. And uh, if you're not following on either of those, Basically, I've been posting color combinations that I think are inspirational or that might get people thinking if they're unusual and maybe not colors that they would use normally. And I thought I would take that a step further and pick some color combinations uh, that I've seen that I thought would be fun to play with. So you can see what to do with all that stuff I've been posting, kind of give yourself an idea. I do not have a picture of what I posted um, because I'm worried about copyright. So I'm going to find another way to show you that type of color. I mean, if you're on Pinterest and you're on Facebook, you'll probably, I think this might be on Pinterest, but basically what we're going to do today is we're going to play with aqua and red and black and silver and a little bit of blue-green. And so if we look at our color wheel, and I think I've posted some photos with this color combination, um, you've got your red, and then of course opposite your red is green. And uh, this is basically one half of a split complementary. So uh, remember I told you there's really not any rules. I mean, once you understand kind of what's going on, um, you don't have to use the other color if you don't want, which would be yellow green and blue green. We're just gonna do blue green and red. And as you can see, they look gorgeous together. So I can't show you the photograph, uh, but I, I've seen this color combination many places. I think that you have too. We're going to, of course, use black as type of a grounding, um, kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Just tone it down a little, I guess is what I'm trying to say. We're also going to use some soft flicks. This is the heavy uh, soft flicks in uh, black onyx. And then I have some silver chain. I think I bought this on BB Craft. Um, it's a cable chain. Oh, and there's an ear wire. We have a stray ear wire. He's crashing the party. Go home, Mr. Earwire. You weren't invited. You weren't invited. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to use some of this as well. And then I have here, this is some dyed quartz and a really pretty aqua. I just pulled some red, different reds, and some turquoise hishi beads, and some blue greens. Then we've got some wood some wood, uh, I think these are 12 millimeter. Yeah, 12 millimeter uh, round beads, a couple of lava beads, some more, I think they call these turbine check beads, lots of silver, uh, more, more black. And so we're gonna play with that. And I thought we would just do a really cool, maybe a, um, a little bit of a multi-strand necklace is what I was thinking. So hang on one second. I want to fix this. I think my phone's about to fall. Give me one second. Sorry about that. That would not have been good. <laughs> I don't want to give everybody vertigo. So anyway, um, as you can see, I've got these all arranged. I like to arrange them pretty so you can see, but we'll just move everything to the top of our board here. And let me scooch out just a little so you can see everything. And uh, my idea is to do like a double strand, sort of a double strand, kind of the illusion of a double strand. I'll show you what I mean. And um, 
that's where the soft flexor is going to come into play because we're going to attach it. Here's our findings. Now for the, I wanted to do a focal bead. So I had this elephant. I don't remember where I got this guy. I've had him for a while and I just love how ornate he is. And these beads here are super ornate. So I think I want to use those for sure in the necklace. And then uh, we're gonna do, see how his, so instead of just a um, jump ring, I'm gonna use a bale. If you've never used bales before, it's basically you string your stringer through there and you can attach whatever you're hanging. We'll use a, a jump ring to attach to this. And I, I like using bales. I have quite a few of them. Um, so just a thought when you're buying, you know, focal beads to maybe use a bale. You can also make your own. I have a lot of um, bead caps because I want to use, I want I want silver to show too. So I pulled out a lot of bead caps. And um, so we're going to use a bunch of those. Here is our clasp. We're just going to do a hook, a hook and a soldered jump ring. For our clasp. I'm going to put that to the side and basically we're just gonna it's gonna be a stringing project. Oh, I liked these silver beads too. Where's this other? I pulled a couple of those. So I want to just start by figuring out what I want to use where and like I'm coming to you of course with no no plan like we do. <laughs> I just had the plan on the color um, but the idea is you find something, you know, you, if you go on Pinterest and you put in color inspiration or color combinations, a whole bunch of stuff's going to come up. And a lot of times they show swatches like in a row by the picture. Those of you following me on Pinterest, if you're not following me on Pinterest, please do. Um, it's uh, Marcy creates one word and then studio. And that way you can see what I'm talking about. If you're not in the Facebook group, I've been posting quite a few things in the Facebook group, but um, you can go on your own and do this. And so basically I just put, oh, in the Facebook group, I'm sorry, is uh, Marcy Creates. So you look under groups and you go to Marcy Creates and there's about 108 of us happy souls in there looking at gorgeous things. And I try to post something every day, inspirational, just to get your juices flowing and your ideas flowing. Uh, but anyway, if you put in color inspiration, you're going to get a whole bunch of color combinations that are going to pop up. And so from there, you can take the pictures that you see. If you find a combination, I challenge you to find a combination that maybe you wouldn't normally use, uh, you know, maybe you have something in your stash you've been hanging on to or a collection maybe from Bargain Bead Box that you weren't sure what you wanted to do with it. I challenge you to find a picture with maybe some of those colors. You can put in keywords for the colors um, and try to make a piece. So have that reference handy and go through your stash and pull pull the beads that you think kind of match up with that. Of course, they don't have to be exact. Um, the idea is to, you know, broaden your horizons on the color choices that you're making. And so, yeah, just pick a few um, and, you know, experiment. Don't, you know, just do what I, I'm doing here, you know, put them in some trays and line them up. And then we're just going to decide how we're going to want to you know, string them. This is just a basic stringing. So, you know, you don't have to uh, do any fancy other things unless you want to, you know, um, but this will, I think what this will do is give you more confidence. I, you know, I hear a lot from people that they're not feeling very confident about color. And so this is just another way to build your confidence and using color. And if you see it in an example, I feel like 
that kind of gives you, I don't want to say permission, but you see that it works. So you already know that it works. So if, if you're finding the, you know, the color wheel still intimidating, there are still plenty of inspiration to be had out there. And if you don't have a color wheel, you know, this is just another way to, like I said, get inspiration um, and use up pieces in your stash. So I'm just organizing right now some of these. I should have probably done this off camera, but um, but that's the end of my lecture. So my purpose in showing you all of this is just to get, I'm trying to give you as many ways as possible to, uh, you know, give yourself some inspiration, especially, and look, and where to look for it. Sometimes we don't know where to look for it. And, you know, some of these pictures are, you know, birds or nature. They have nothing to do with jewelry necessarily, but you see that those colors look beautiful and then you want to use them. So I've got my findings kind of organized here and I really don't know if I'm going to use all of these. I'm just getting them organized in case I want to use them. I know I want to use this guy. So, uh, and then I did try to go through and find bead caps that would go with these um, dark brown, I mean, black uh, wood beads. So we are definitely going to use some wood beads. And I like to do odd numbers. Um, that's just kind of my, my thing. I think odd numbers, and you'll hear this a lot from other people, they tend to um, look better to the eye. I thought those check beads were pretty. So the thought is uh, using the color, and this is big punches of color, you know, um, and you do, I do want some of this aqua to be next to the red, but I sometimes you want it in smaller doses. So we've got some little uh, round donut looking beads here we can use. And I have some don't know if I'll use these lava beads, although I like the texture. And that's another thing to think about as you're doing stuff like this is these have a texture, these have a design maybe that mimics this. You know, start thinking about how things relate to each other and then you're doing going, I don't think the square is really gonna work for me on this one. But um, I like these turbine beads. Maybe use some of those. And these might be a bit big. So I think for starters, we'll make our, I think we should do our second little strand. Let me, do I have a pen? I don't. My idea is to make a long necklace and then have a little spot where you're doing more uh, beads and it looks like a second strand. So um, I think I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna make that second strand. And for that second strand, I think I want to do just a little bit of a drop um, feature, but I don't want it to be, I don't want it to overpower our elephant, but maybe we could do a little red drop with some bead caps. So let's do that. Let me get out some head pins and we will make our drop first. I think I have some silver over here somewhere. Okay, so my head pins are somewhere, I don't know where, but I'm gonna use some wire instead. And I learned this little trick from Brittany from Turquoise Street. And so if you're low on head pins, or you can't find any. By the way, I got new nippers. Yay! You can, uh, this is 18 gauge silver craft wire. Uh, and I'm gonna just make a, a quick um, drop for my uh, bead. So basically we're just gonna Bend this. Behind the bead. 
I may do a little wire wrap that may make it look cool. Let's do that. This is a little bit tougher, um, so warm it if you can. I've done something to my thumb, so I'm trying to be careful. I don't know what. It's been a couple of weeks of injuries. I don't know what's going on with me. <laughs> anyway, I'm doing a little wire wrap here, which I think is kind of cute. And then, let me cut that. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with these. These are also Zyron, these nippers. And they have that really point, pointy, I like it. I like the point. You can really get into some tight spots. Um, and I found that on Amazon. I'll link it in my description for you. So I think I'm going to add maybe one of these little guys. And then we will do our wire wrap. And I think I want the wire to show. If you don't want the wire to show, you can put it in the back, but I think I want it to show. And I'm just gonna make a basic loop at the top here. You don't want your wire to go flying. Right. So here is our, oops, don't want to cut it. Whew. I got to make sure I remember those are cutters. <laughs> that would be bad. But anyway, here is our little drop that's going to go above our elephant. So now I'm going to take, I think I want the middle section to be, you know, not super long, maybe about like that. So let's cut some of this and I'm just going to do like a strung middle part. Let's see. Let's put our, our drop. You think some hearts would be cute in here? And a rondelle. Let's do a rondelle. I did pick some different shades of red and some different shades of the aqua. I think that that adds a little something, something. I think it makes it more rich looking, gives it more depth. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for, a little more depth. So I am not going to bead this whole thing, but I do want, I want the wire to show, you know, I love the Softflex wire, so I always like for that to show, but um, I got these little turquoise Hishi beads, which I love. Um, I think these came from Hallcraft, which they do the beads for Michaels. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's see. Let's do some little red, little red jobbers. I got these little red discs in here. Whoops. Easier to do this, I think. Use your, that's what's nice about this soft looks. You can just scoop your beads up that way. So I'm liking that. I do want to add some black. I do have some black uh, number six seed beads that I grabbed. So we'll grab some of those. And 
Oh yeah, that looks nice. Let's see. Maybe a little more silver. We'll do these little fluted spacer beads. I think I got these at Bargain Bead Box. Maybe just a few more beads. Let's do another. Black. And then we'll do a few more Hishi beads. These are nice and uh, uniform. Okay. So that's pretty and it's gonna hang. Uh, maybe we need to do one more silver. Okay. So that's gonna hang um, amongst more of my strong beads. So let's get, we're going to put this to the side and I would recommend using a bead stopper if you have one. I don't know what I did with mine at the moment. Oh, I've got a little clip here. These guys work too. Some of these just clip it so it doesn't go anywhere. And then you don't have to worry about that unraveling before you're done with the rest of your necklace. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna use some of this, the rest of this, or let's see how much. I think I want the necklace to be about 20 inches uh, because I am gonna add some chain at the end. I like long necklaces. You can, you know, this is up to you how long you wanna make it. I'm just coming in and measuring 20, about 20 inches. Is that right? Yeah. And, but you do you. If you, why don't I just drop that? <laughs> well, we're going to get, we're going to start over. I am not getting that now. <laughs> you guys, I don't know why I am so, I'm all thumbs all the time. It's just silly. And I really, I'm not kidding. I drop stuff all the time. It doesn't matter what room of the house I'm in. <laughs> So, you can imagine, it can be nerve-wracking emptying the dishwasher. <laughs> okay, so I think I've cut about 20 inches here. So uh, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my little elephant on and I need a jump ring to add my bail. That should work. That's an 18 gauge jump ring. And sometimes you can get bales that will open for you. Um, if I had one where the loop went that way, that would have been ideal, but I didn't. And it's no big deal, you just add a jump ring. No biggie. I do love this elephant. I wish I could remember where. I think I bought it on Etsy somewhere. I do that. I gotta keep more track of what I'm getting so I can tell you all. Um, so here is my bale with my elephant. And I just noticed these little divots in here. You could add some little crystals in there if you wanted for his eyes. That would be cool. But I just loved how ornate all this was. So anyway, let's add our, let's put our soft flex on. All right, and then let's, we've got to decide what we're going to do here. So I think 
I want to kind of mimic what we did with the, we'll put some red. I have another red one. Love this deep garnet red, it's so pretty. And then we'll do a, oops. Actually, let's do another sparkly rondel. Cool. All right. A little turquoise action. I love these hearts. So let's add the hearts. I love these hibiscus check flower beads. They come in like a million colors, don't they? So let's see what we got here. So I'm liking that. And I wanna add, let's do, hmm. Let's add our I think I want to go this way with this. I love these cinnabar looking. Now cinnabar, I mean, these aren't actual cinnabar, of course, that would be frightfully expensive. But from what I understand, you can correct me if I'm wrong, cinnabar is many, many layers of paint that gets carved. It's really gorgeous. Um, you can see like, um, I've seen uh, vases and plates made with that. And I love that you can get beads that look like that. It's very, very cool looking. So now I think I want to add, uh, maybe my lava bead. No, I think we better go with the wood because we're going to run out of wire. So let's do our wood beads. Oh, before we do that, I think I want one more sparkle. More sparkle, please. So the decisions when you make this, of course, are how much of the turquoise do you want to use? You know, you could do a very moody black necklace or something and just have accents of the red and the turquoise. That would be gorgeous. Or you could do more red and do accents of the blue. I mean, you can just... As you, as you can tell, you could go on forever um, with the combination. So it's a cool combination to explore because then you can play with how much of each color you're using. So do, do let me know if you try this out. I would love to see I have a few brave souls that show their jewelry <laughs> and I wish more people would. Um, we have such a nice group on the Facebook. So that's very pretty. So let's see now, I wanna check how much room I'm gonna need, whoops, for this. This is my idea. And I was gonna connect it with some uh what do you call it? What do you call those things? I'm losing my mind. Crimp beads. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um but I think I'm gonna add I don't know. I, what I don't want is this to be too close to that. In other words, I want the drops to, I think I need to do, let's do our three, um, 
wood beads like I was talking about. And I think I'm going to put a he sheet between each one. Oh, and you know what? We haven't even used these um, really pretty quartz beads yet. We got to use those. I think I'm going to put the lava beads to the side. I don't think we're going to have room for those. Let's add this. This may or may not work. We're going to find out. But you know, if it doesn't work, you just start over. It's not a big deal. It's just wire and beads. It's not brain surgery. <laughs> I have to tell myself that too, <laughs> especially when you're making a video. It's like, uh, but I, I appreciate you all saying you, you actually like seeing my thought process. So that tells me I'm not too far off the mark. Okay. So uh, is that too much? Yeah, I think. We're going to do something different. I do like that, though. But let's grab... Let's let's do put the hishi. Let's put him back. And then we'll grab a couple of these. Uh, I did pull out bead caps for those, too. These little bead caps also came from Bargain Bead Box. And I'm fairly certain that this quartz that I'm using, this dyed quartz, came from Bargain Bead Box. And I just placed a big order. So in the next week or so, whenever I get it, I'll be doing a, a haul video of what I got. Oop. Let's do this side. I do love these colors together and it's not something a lot of people would pick, but it's super pretty. Um, I think I want a little bit, another little touch of red. Let's see what we have here. pretty okay now let's see it's still too high <laughs> hmm. so I like this combination I think when we attach, we'll do this combination. When we have the two wires together, I think that's what we'll do. And I think I'm just gonna add, I don't need that much length. I want a little bit of length, but I do want more red. So maybe these guys. Okay, let me turn this guy over. All right, scooch, scooch, scooch. So, a little delicate procedure here. I think that that looks nice. 
So let's attach here. And like I said, I'm gonna use some crimp beads. And these are not the beetle on, I mean, these are not the um, crimp beads you get from Softlix. I gotta order some more. Uh, these are decent crimp beads though. They are. So, but they're not as good, but they're good. I think, let's put it on this guy. So I'm gonna attach both of these necklaces with this crimp. And I'm probably gonna have to show a little of the wire, which I don't mind because it's soft flex wire. And so that's why I thought it would look nice. So the decision is how much room, because I want this to hang nicely. I think maybe just shy of an, maybe half an inch should do it. I will use some crimp covers on this. So that feels pretty sturdy. So the trick's gonna be the other side. The other side's gonna be tricky, so. Whoo, deep breath. Let's see. Scoot these guys over. Scoot these guys. Okay. Scoot those guys. Let's make sure everything's Let's let gravity help us a little. And I think Oh, I gotta put this on here. It would help if you added the other wire, Marcy. <laughs> Come on. And there are other ways you can do this. I mean, this is not by any means the only way to make, you know, a double looking necklace. I just had the idea since I was using the soft flex because I don't mind if the wire's showing because I love it so much. So um, I think that will be very pretty. So let's very carefully, I think my hand's probably in the way, but I'm just gonna crimp this. Very nice. All right, now we can, we can do our red beads and I don't you don't have to use both these wires but I figure they're here if they'll fit through why not it'll just be you know a little bit sturdier um, with the necklace this is the um, the heavy wire so if you're using you know pearls or tiny drilled beads that may not work uh, but I have beads that are the holes are big enough. So, until you get to your um, bead cap. So now I'll cut this one. I'm going to cut the shorter ones uh, so I can keep stringing. Those are pretty even, but which one's longer? That one's longer. So we'll cut this one. And I save my wire if I, you know, if I cut a big piece like this one, I save it because you can, you know, make fringe with it, um, earrings. So I don't get rid of those. All right. So 
Oh, I forgot about these. I like these. I'm going to use these. Alrighty. Looking good. Looking good. So I think I do want to add some of these guys. So we'll do that next. I've got so many of you still asking me how I'm feeling, and I really appreciate that. That's so sweet. Uh, I'm doing much, much better. Yeah, that um, shoulder thing was no fun. I couldn't really lift anything, and so I'd forget. And, you know, even just lifting the coffee pot, it was, it was really strange. But it is better. So thank you that, for all of you who were asking. Okay, so I think... I am going to beat up a little ways higher, but not uh, too much more. And then we're going to add our chain and our findings, our clasp, I mean. We will do some more hearts up here. I do love this combination. It's, it's one of my favorites. Um, I think I've probably said that before, but um, I've seen like for Chinese New Year, uh, this combination a lot. Um, and on a tablescape, like if you're, wow, that does not want to go in there. On a tablescape with all the linens and things, it looks really pretty. Especially if you have like turquoise glasses and then if you can find a like a tablecloth with all those colors in it. Super pretty. So I'm I'm really wanting everybody to try try a new color combination. Uh, maybe something you've seen that inspires you. I of course will keep posting things um, through Pinterest and through Facebook. And yeah, give a few you know give a few of them a try. I think you're gonna be wildly surprised at how much more confident you'll be in making the jewelry and picking colors and maybe using colors you didn't think of but you have in your stash so I think I'm going to stop there and maybe maybe one more little silver something because that just seems like a good ending to me and then we're going to attach this I'm just going to use again some more uh beads, some crimp beads. I can't get that through my brain today. Some more crimp beads to attach this to our chain. So I need to decide right now how much chain I'm going to use. This turn, this is turning out very nice. Let me move these over. And you may, you know, you're not going to pull every, you're not going to use everything that you pull out, but you might want to do a companion piece or, you know, a bracelet, earrings. I'm going to stop tonight with the necklace, but I mean, you, you know what I mean. So let's see. So that was 20 inches. I think I'm going to add another... Maybe three inches to each side. We're going to be heading into sweater weather, so I like the longer necklaces because they're, you know, they fit over if you like wear a turtleneck or something or any kind of anything with a collar. It's much better. I'm just evening this up before I attach it. All right. I'm going to attach the chain. Here is our closure. A couple more of these crimp beads. And we'll be in business. 
So I'm literally just going to attach these with uh, the crimp. Just like this. Just fold it over. You don't want it super tight. You need to have movement, so make yourself a nice little loop like that so that you have movement in your jewelry. It's important. If you if you make it too tight, it's gonna be stiff and it'll hang weird. You'll know. <laughs> You'll be like, that doesn't look right. Okay. Do the other side, and then we'll attach. So I do want to make sure that these are a little bit even. some on that. Let me push this up a minute. Okay. Just trying to make sure it's even. It's not going to be perfect, but you just want to get it as close as you can. Okay, let me cut this extra off. Boy, I like these new nippers. They're great. I will definitely link these in my description. Okay. Let's grab some more jump rings. I think I'm going to go with a couple of oval ones. Well, maybe not. Oh, Chacha's coming to visit. Hi, Chacha. Mama's making jewelry. Can you wait a minute? You go night night, okay? I'll see you in a minute. She loves to come in when I'm making a video. <laughs> the timing is impeccable. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, she's been spoiled all weekend. We've been hanging out a lot so she's part of her is like where where have you been I'm don't you know you need to pay attention to me <laughs> she's been glued to me her and ginger both uh, all day I got up to do laundry and they both looked offended it's like hey I have to have clean clothes <laughs> You know, we all don't walk around with fur all over ourselves. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, they need baths, let me tell you. You hear that? You need a bath. She didn't, she looks offended still. <laughs> you need a bath, Cha-Cha. Okay, Let me close that up. And this just hooks in here. And I think, I think the last time I used one of these, I had to, um, you gotta kind of have to work it in there. But anyway, here's our really pretty color inspired necklace. Now I will add some crimp covers, you know, after, um, 
and oops, it's looking good. I like it. Uh, what do you think? Um, do you like the color combination? I think it turned out nice. This is an interesting technique. Again, there's other ways you could do this. You could use some connectors here instead, uh, a loop. I think I've done that before, a big loop, like a, a hammered silver loop would be pretty. And um, I just love this though. And I think I will do more projects in these in this colorway because I like it so much. So this is the red teal turquoise in black, which uh, you saw in the thumbnail of the um, my YouTube thumbnail YouTube channel channel. <laughs> Man, my tang is tangled. <laughs> oh, y'all know what I mean. You saw it. You saw it and clicked on it. So whatever that was, <laughs> there was your hint. Uh, but anyway, so I think for the next few Sundays, we will just take some color combinations. I'll figure out a way to have swatches from the inspiration piece. I just don't want to break any copyright rules. So I did not print those out because I really don't know if I have permission to or not. And I would rather err on the side of caution. But um, do check out Pinterest. You don't necessarily have to follow me. You can um, just type in color inspiration and a bunch of stuff's going to pop up. If you do, again, want to follow me on Pinterest and see what I've pinned as far as color combinations. By all means, it's Marcy Creates and then Studio. And then I would love to have you on Facebook. Can't say enough about the group there. Everybody is super nice. They love color. They love design. We're looking at beautiful gemstones every day. So um, that's, that's there for your inspiration and a little bit of beating humor and just you know, enjoying each other and talking beads and looking at what uh, if everybody made because there's some really pretty projects people have showed on there. Uh, and I hope that they'll show more. So um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, I will see you on the next video. Please take care of yourselves and your families and be safe. And I will see you on the Tutorial Tuesday coming up.